Welcome to our third webinar where we will show you how to use the sales features within SuperOffice to increase sales to your customers we targeted in the last webinar. Today my colleague Chris will play the role of a salesperson in a company using SuperOffice. He will take you through a common situation of calling prospects, creating sale opportunities, producing quotes and reporting on the sales forecast. Marketing has informed the sales director that the mailing campaign has been sent and he can now instruct the sales team to contact those that were interested. A dynamic selection has been created for the sales team to use it as a call list in SuperOffice. Chris will now take you through the process of contacting prospects and managing sales. Following the recent mailing, I've been advised to change my mini view to the selection members Q2 product offer click-throughs. I can use this list to see which prospects I have to call. I can also lock this list in the mini view so it's visible as I navigate around SuperOffice. I can click on one of these companies to change the main company card, therefore providing me an overview of the customer before calling. Now I have an overview, I can carry out my call with the customer. Further to the call, we can now create a sale opportunity. Here, we give the sale a name. You'll notice that the company and contact has automatically been pre-filled. I want to enter the project Q2 product offer as this will be used to provide an overview of the campaign success. The sale amount will be updated automatically when we create the quotation. The owner and sale type has been pre-filled and we can see that the sale stage is assigned as per the sale type. The sale date provides an estimate of when the sale should close and is dependent on the sale type. This aids in accurate forecasting. We can then enter a source for further reporting. A sale has a primary contact, but partners and subcontractors may also be involved in the sale. These are referred to as stakeholders and can be entered in this section. Stakeholders can include individuals as well as organisations. All of the activities relating to the sale will be listed underneath the Activities tab. Another feature of this particular sale type is the Sales Guide. This guide has been carefully created to assist you in working through the required activities until you have completed the sale. As you can see, we have three sales stages, with their own activities listed underneath each stage. This has begun the sales process and the sale owner can start to work their way through each part of the guide until the sale is complete. Now that Chris has created sales opportunities from our call list, we need to produce a proposal to send to the customer. Quotes is a great way to create standardisation across your company by uniform proposals. Manage versions, get approvals and even place orders with a simple click saving sales teams time, giving them the ability to sell more. I'll hand you back over to Chris, who will show you how to create, send and amend a quotation within SuperOffice. The next action is to create a quotation and send it to the customer. We do that by clicking the Quote tab and selecting Create a new quote. First, we need to produce a covering letter. We do this by clicking the link to create a quote document. Here we are taken to a list of available document types and we can select the appropriate type for this sale. Next we add a subject line, quotation for Missile System, before pressing the create button. The document is pre-populated with the information the company requires us to provide. However, 
We can further personalise it at this stage if we wish. We can now click the Add Product link and we're presented with a search box. Here we can find the product we wish to quote for. In this case, we are selling a Mittal system. So I'll search for the word Mittal and it's returned two products from our price list. The first product I'll select is the handset. I'll change the quantity, apply discount before saving it and searching for the server. We can see that the discount provided is over my allowed discount limit. I can either press the send button, in which case my manager will need to approve the quote before I can send it to the customer, or because I want to send this to the customer straight away, I'll have to lower the discount that I provided. We also have the possibility to add a quote alternative to provide different options to the customer. In the details tab, we can enter payment and delivery information. This can be defaulted to the company's preference. We can also add relevant attachments to be sent with the quote based on the sale type. We are now ready to send the quote to the customer. Currently, I'm working on version number one of this quotation. On the next screen, we are asked to choose our quote layout, but we will remain with the quote that displays images. Before I send this to the customer, I'd like to see what the quote looks like, so I'll click the preview button. And I can see the quote looks absolutely fine. Now I want to ensure that I'll be sending the quote as an email and also archiving it as a PDF. And I also want to ensure that a follow-up will be created in my diary. This will ensure I can trace the quotation before the quote expires. Once I click the OK button, an email will be produced that will contain the terms and conditions together with the quotation. as you can see here. I can also amend the text in the email before I send it to the customer. The customer has come back and asked for a further discount. We can edit the quote and apply a 5% discount to the server. I can now save this and also note that the version number is now incremented to number 2. At any stage I can go back and review any previous quotations I have sent. The customer then comes back to us having signed the quotation and all I need to do now is press the place order button. I can select which confirmation email will be sent and I can also mark the sale as sold. Once I click OK, it will create an email with the standard text and also attach the order confirmation PDF. We've now shown how after a mailing campaign, our salespeople have followed up and created opportunities for all customers interested in our new product. We will now show you how the marketing department can see the success of the campaign, how a salesperson can have a complete overview of their pipeline, and likewise, how a manager can have an overview of the company's pipeline. 
Within the diary view, a salesperson can use the sales secretary to have a complete overview of all the uncompleted sales opportunities, won, lost and ongoing. They can sort the sales by the column headings. And even double click a sale to be taken directly to that sales screen where they can progress it further if required. From here, we can click on the project name Q2 Product Offer to see an overview of the project's success. In this case, we are interested in the Sales tab, where we can see an overview of those won, lost and ongoing sales opportunities, and we can export this for further manipulation if required. Alternatively, you can use dashboards to monitor and measure the success, both on an individual and company basis. Here, we see the individual dashboard where we are displaying the pipeline, pipeline in numbers, forecast over a three month period and year to date sales compared to last year. We can also view the company dashboard, in this case showing the pipeline in numbers, win loss rate for the group by source, largest upcoming sales and leads won by source. The dashboards have preset options, but you can use selections as a data source to further personalise your own dashboard requirements. Thank you for taking the time to watch this webinar. We hope you found this useful. If you have any additional questions, please contact your account manager who will be happy to assist. We look forward to you joining us for our next webinar, focusing on looking after your treasure, where we will use SuperOffice service to handle customer inquiries.